Oh, Jose, it's so good to see you, brother. Thanks for taking oh, the time to do this. Hey, I just turned the recording on so we can record the video and the audio, and uh, just well, you know, want to make sure it's okay with you to to be able to use this. And uh, of course, cool man, cool. Please thank you for the invitation, brother. I'm happy. It took us a year to get together. So I yeah, all, yeah, just just a little over a year. Yeah. Yes. I and it, so much has happened. It you know as a you know as a result of of that week that we spent uh, down at uh, Teotihuacan, it just absolutely amazing. Oh, <laughs> uh, beautiful! And, and maybe when we get to Joshua Tree, we can do it in person. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I would love to do a follow up, and actually sit in the same room and uh, and be able to do this. But yeah, you especially know, in that desert. <laughs> yeah, I know. They, they, I've been here. I showed up in Joshua Tree in uh, December. I've been here since in De- since December, and I'll be uh, headed back to my home in the Northwest in like the second week in June. Oh, but the, the desert has kind of captured my heart, brother. It's uh, it's a magic. Oh, yes. It's a magical place. It's magical, yes. Yeah. And, and I'm going to go to the East Coast on, uh, on the, in June as well. I'm going to Connecticut. Oh, wow. All right. Yeah. Now, do you have a conference there? Yes, yeah, so we, we go there and then we do the Omega Institute in, in the early Junes. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yes. And the, and the new book came out on Wednesday, so I'm going to be happy uh, touring and you, sharing you know, people. You know something? I, I got a uh, pre-release copy of of. Uh, the wisdom of the shamans. I brother, oh. oh man, it is uh, uh, you're the first story you tell, and I don't know if this is a good segue to just begin our conversation, but <laughs> the first story you tell was has been among the stories that have impacted my life and like woke something up within me. You know the story of the story of the the eagle the snake and the cactus and find you know how how we're like we're we're on this journey to find our home you know <laughs> yeah, yes i i really love the story the moment that i i went to one of the meditation places and that just downloaded on me i i, I figured it out how many times do we go searching for our truth outside of ourselves and, yeah you yeah. know we go we go we go years years looking for this vision but it, you know it's always it's always home when we decide that we are the truth and yeah. we're no longer going to lie to ourselves. Yeah. That, be, that becomes the angel, of the resurrection of the angel back home. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, uh, and I love the way you took that story and, and had brought it all the way to who we are as a, within ourselves. It's not just, it's not just the story of the Mexican people or, or the Toltecs or the Aztecs finding their new home physically. It's it's coming all the way home to who we are. Yes, yeah. and that's a beautiful thing about being a human and alive and, and understanding life is that we all want are one universal force. And, and no matter where we're at, the moment we, we get that point, you know, life is different. Like yeah. something like consciousness wakes up and yeah, and this is where we can create the art. <laughs> well, the other thing that I am loving about the book is like you're inviting us into the life of a shaman. You know, oh. that, that, my friend, is really beautiful. Oh, I, I've always had respect for my brothers and sisters because we all were born the same. Yeah. Some we don't believe and some we believe. Yeah. You know, some is like Siddhartha going forward and, and some are the ones who become the Buddha. But, you know, we all have, we just have to wake up that force. And that's one of the beautiful things about life, you know, that we can break down the barriers and, and the illusion of separation. When we are united, we know that we're all are the same. We all go through the same things and different stories. Yeah. But uh, we, we, we resurrect like the phoenix. And when that happens, we find the, the flames. And this is what the shaman it is. We're keepers of the flame. Yeah. And when we have our flame, we, we pass it on to our brothers and sisters. <laughs> and that's the illuminating path. Yeah. No, it's beautiful. You know, one of the things that um, it, it one of the podcast guests that I had on, her name was Erin Sheriff. And before we started recording, she asked me if I had heard uh, something that Thich Nhat Han had said, because one of the mm-hmm. things that he's recently said is, um, you know, it's 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 there's probably not a lot of value in us looking for the next Buddha, Jesus, Gandhi, or Martin Luther King Jr. Because 
you know, the, the wisdom we seek, what we seek is actually within us and, um, mm. and among us, among the, our brothers and sisters, you know? Yes. And one of the things that I've appreciated about you, Jose, is while you have the opportunity to stand and teach and, and to present and to be a very public figure, the the message that you bring us is like the guru is within you know the the mm. shaman is within all of us yes it, it was many times you know we look for validation for the outside to be us but when we break that doubt we don't need no validation because something says wakes up and it's the real us yeah and this we just begin to wake up and that's why i like to say to my friends once we wake up, we cannot go back to sleep. Yeah, we that's to yeah. Regard and... <laughs> yeah. I that's true, and that that reminds me of a scene from the movie The Matrix when Keanu Reeves and Samuel L. Jackson are sitting in that bombed out, and and uh, and Jackson offers him the two pills, the red one and the blue one, mm -hmm. and, he, and he said, "If you take the red, if you take the blue one, you'll just go back and you'll never remember anything that's happened. But if you take the red one." You can never go back. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you're awakened and forever. And that's, I yeah. think that's what you're referring to. It's that kind of awakening, isn't it? Yes. And, and after being in, and being the opportunity and the gift of being with different cultures, many people look for enlightenment thinking it's going to be the end of, of, of suffering, the end of something, the end of feeling. But now we feel more because yeah. real enlightenment is service. When we begin being service to the people we love with all our heart and to ourselves. Oh, wow. That's a service that we will not allow negativity to come into our life. Yeah. But it's a service that we will do until the day we go home. Yeah. And this is enlightenment because we keep the flame alive. Yeah. And there is no doubt what we're here for. How, you know, how you, you've gone through some challenges. You shared your story um, with us down in T.O. Um, when... How old were you when you really began to wake up to who you are and why you're here and, you know, move through your own like suffering and, and awaken to that place of being of service the way that you are today? Well, there were so many stages in my life. Like there were many times I woke up and every time I woke up, I, 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 I went back to a different, difficult challenge because I didn't have self-love. I have love for everybody else, but what I mean self-love is that I mean I, I sacrifice myself. I sacrifice, you know, the, the the what I wanted to do, what I wanted to express, what I wanted to be. I, I sacrifice it, so I was like walking on eggshells in the dream of the planet. And until the, until one point that I remember that I completely wake up is when I lost my eyesight and I regain my eyesight. And then I look into the mirror and I said, "Oh my gosh, that person has been waiting for me. He's been loyal to me." It's time for me to be loyal to that person. And, and that person I'm talking about is myself because I will follow myself to hell if I listen to lies. And this is when I really discovered that in the Totec tradition, there's nothing to learn but to unlearn. Let go of the stories that doesn't serve us anymore. Let go of those old wounds that we keep reopening because that only creates an addiction of suffering. And uh, the most powerful thing that really opened me in my life is self-forgiveness. Mm. Forgiving myself and letting go of all the stories that I hurt myself with. And that's the point when I discovered the meaning of my life is to take care of Jose because I know what makes Jose suffer and I know yeah. what makes Jose happy because I am Jose. Yeah. And that's the service that I'm talking about. You know, we don't have to learn all the all the information in the world. We just have to be truthful ourselves. And whatever comes, it comes our way. So in that moment, when I lost my eyesight and regained it, I was grateful to have my eyesight back. And then I noticed that before I lost my eyesight, I was really blind because I was blind with my own poison. So like the rattlesnake, yeah. I learned to control my emotional poison. Doesn't mean that I don't have poison anymore. No, I do have poison and I have more poison than when I was young. But I learned how to control it. And that and that is the service to make the perfect equilibrium with everything. Because let's say someone offends me and I take it personal, that moment I could take the opportunity to destroy everything that I've worked for. Right. So I say, yeah. what is the price to pay for this? And yeah. you know, it's not worth it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it isn't worth it, is it? <laughs> <laughs> and sometimes they put really good one, really juicy one that we feel it, but at the same time, that's the service that I talk about to overcome the, the pressure that we feel inside because it is like this little puppy, you know, that communicates through us, you know, I'm suffering, you know, that it begins barking. Right. And at the same time, we our body does the same thing, but sometimes we don't want to listen because we begin suppressing yeah. and we begin wanting to run away. But like my father says, if we don't like a group of people, we can just run away from them, walk away from them. But if we don't like ourselves, 
we can never walk away. And this is what many people do, they pretend. And especially with more awareness, we're intelligent with our intelligence, with our justifications that we don't advance. But the moment that we don't use the word against ourselves anymore is when we begin to be impeccable with our word. Yeah. And when we begin to be impeccable with the word, we begin to think impeccably. And this is what I mean about seeing, waking up in our in the illusion of the world, because sometimes we walk our path and the illusion gets into some people that we love. So when the illusion hits some people that we love, we want to control them and keep them, you know. But, you know, the moment of letting them go is, is important because they have to follow whatever comes into their heart. Yeah. And, and this is the freedom that we give. When we let the people free, the dream free, we free ourselves too. Yeah. And this is the moment that we completely know that if we can help a situation, we can do it. Wow. Do you, do you, do you ever find yourself getting caught in your story and in the dream still where like you may go two or three days, what I refer to as wrapped around the axle, like just almost unconscious and caught up in the events of your life? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Life, life gets us. And this is the important thing to really understand. We're perfect with the mistakes that we have done, the mistakes that we will do and the mistakes that we do because that's how we learn. Yeah. And uh, and there's some things that we fall into the dream and we feel like, oh, what's happening here? And that's the moment that we begin to to let go and understand because sometimes we have the tentacles like a, a little PTSD from our past lives right. that comes our way and wants to recreate, but then we say, you know, this is not real anymore. So it, it, it becomes a, a, a real sensation to identify what is not going good. So that's why it's important to be honest with ourselves. Yes, I'm feeling this way, I'm feeling that way. Mm -hmm. And being the honesty, we can change it. There's so many people that they're not honest with their feelings. They pretend, you know, and that's the one they say, fake it till you make it. But that must become so big for everything yeah. that we're never in integrity. And especially when we are in a teaching position, you know, we have to really be open because we all are the same. That's why I believe that everybody is a shaman. Everybody is that life force, the potential, because we have forgot sometimes, but the moment that we remember this important thing. So I make a prayer every time that I wake up because of this. I say, may life protect me from myself. Yeah. So I don't take myself personal and don't take anybody personal because that's the little, little moment that we are ready to fall, you know? Yeah. And with awareness, we know that we're ready to fall. But at the contrary, if we control our poison, we know that this emotion will come and go like anything else. The moment is just to be honest and not to pretend. Yeah. Yeah. That's in, you know, that's easy. It's, it's so easy to pretend what, you know, oh, yeah. the, the standard response with how are you doing today, brother is, Oh, I'm good, man. I'm, I'm chill. It's I'm, <laughs> everything is just <laughs> fine. And, yeah. and I, I may have just, you know, I may have just wrecked my car and not having a really great day. So yeah. Yeah. And, and that really wakes us up because, let's say, if we have a heartbreak, you know, someone says, how are you doing today? And one says, I'm good, you know, yeah. big smile. No, they will feel it. But you go, no, I have a little heartbreak, you know. Yeah. I don't want to go into details. I just want to get it off the phone. But, but yes, I'm going to something. And that, that way people don't have to guess what's happening to you, right. you know, because then they'll make assumptions of something's happening to you. Yeah. You know, but having mm -hmm. the clarity, you know, that, that's it, you know. Let's, let's move on forward. That's what I like about the movie uh, Eight Mile from Eminem. You know, he used to judge oh. himself and he gave power away to people. Yeah. But the moment that one of his friends says, what are you going to do or react when these people say this about you? And he goes, you know what? Thank you, because that's what I do. So he opened his book, said, yes, I am like this. I feel like this. And what else are you going to say to these people that don't know about me? It, they take a power away from the judgment and that helps to heal faster. Yeah. Because when we know what the program is in the computer world and there's a, a virus in the computer world, if, when we are aware of it, you know, if we created the virus, we can create the antivirus. And, oh, and, and, yeah. and this is like one of the beautiful things that we create. Mm -hmm. We support, you know, our dream because if we don't like our dream, we can change it. And this is the beautiful thing about being honest. Mm -hmm. We're honest. We know what to change. You know, what, what, would you, what would you say for people? I mean, it's that, that being able to change our dream. Uh, I can remember a time in my life, Jose, that the, that the thought of, that even being a possibility wasn't a possibility for me, you know, yes. because I, the, life had become so heavy. Um, I think I shared with you when I was in TO, I had spent a lot of years in active alcoholism and, you know, my life really wasn't my own. And the thought of being able to change that and alter that at a point was, I wasn't even a possibility for me. 
And for those those people that are listening that may be feeling that right now, you know what what is a step? What are what are some steps that that we could begin to take to walk toward creating a new dream? The the, the first thing is to really don't go against self love. Because it's not true that we love ourselves, but we create stories and we believe stories that we don't love ourselves. And this, we will not allow us to, to heal. And uh, one of the things that really helped for me is be skeptical of my own negativity. If I say mm-hmm. no one loves me, I cannot change. Why change at all? So I noticed that I was addicted to that suffering. So the moment of self-loving is the moment that we're going to break a spell. Because we put a spell on ourselves that we don't even know about it. Oh, and we, right. when we kept feeding it, we kept going, 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 especially when we become the victim in the victim world. And I remember when I was such a victim and that I didn't want to share my story, I made myself like like uh, wounded and I, must, and I didn't want to let it go because th- that's all I had. And that I didn't think there was no future until one day I woke up and said, you know, there, there is future if I let this go. Yeah. Because let's say... In life, we will die one day, and we will let everything go. So we can die in life still being alive. We can let go of stories. We can let go of things. The thing that we really have to let go of is how we disrespect ourselves and how we give power to others that we begin rotting from the inside. But we cannot do. We cannot go forward if we don't have self-love. That's why when something in life happened to us, especially when we go into that world in the addiction, you know, we're blinded. We're, we have like a suicide mission slowly. But all of a sudden, a lot gave us a big slap in the face, another opportunity to see what we're doing. And, and we, do we really want to live this way? Yeah. And when the answer is no, because sometimes the negative part will say, yes, I want to hurt myself. I want to hurt Jose. But then when we're feeling death coming close, we feel the fear says, you know what? I don't want this. I want the best. So in that moment, the body, the life will do everything to live because that's what the force wants to do. It wants to live life. So then it begins waking up. In a dream, you know, that is completely a nightmare. But this is the beautiful thing. When we wake up with our own heart to change that dream and we let go of things. That's why anybody who has strong will, they mastered to let go of their old self, you know. And if it was the bottle, if it was any substance that made me sacrifice my life, then if I really love myself, I would never touch that again because we know what was going to happen afterwards. Yeah. And this is the important thing. It's not only the bottle. It's not only any addiction. It's any sort. It can be in relationship. Yeah. For ourselves with love, with relationships, with food, because we don't love ourselves. But the moment that we love ourselves and have the strength intent, we can let go of anything. That's yeah. why one of the most beautiful things for me is hanging around these little little bodies, you know, because they're just unconditional love. Yeah. And they reflect what our mind it is. And I could imagine, what if my old parasite self took a piece of me and put it into this one? And oh. then I see how it will activate, you know, and if I could tell it and, and do an exorcism or make some awareness to put in, I would come and rescue this little puppy from the person that I give. So this is the same with the body. The body uh, doesn't like certain things. And this is when we begin to unlearn everything that we put into it, but forgiveness, that's the key right there. Yeah. Not forgiving others, not be forgiving others, no, but really forgive oneself. And when we really forgive ourselves, we will, we will no longer make the mistake or sacrifice because we know what the price is to pay. Yeah, that's, you know, one of the things that I had never considered before um, that that came when we were uh, in Mexico a year ago was that it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what the suffering is, what we make up to bring into our life for suffering. The human race right now, our dream in this world is we, we're addicted to the suffering itself. And we all we all manifest it. And we all manufacture it in, in in you know, particular ways like drugs and alcohol and food and sex and relationships. Um, uh, that you know, um, and 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 what you offer and what you consistently bring, Jose, is to remind us that it is we've created that dream. I've created that dream. I've created that dream that it's even necessary that I suffer. And then you uh, spend time saying, well, wait a minute. It's only a dream, and you get to change it if you want to. Yes, and, and absolutely. And, and, then, and, that's, and that's the resurrection that I believe in. Yeah. The resurrection that we were dead once in life, and we yeah. come back again. 
Wow. And many people will say, well, you cannot change because you're like this, like that, like that. Let them think whatever they want to think. Yeah. You know, we're not here to please them. We're here to resurrect. And this is when sometimes in the tradition, it's like we wake up in the world of the dead because everybody could be dead in their own dream, trying to control one another. But when we don't try to control one another and we don't want to fit into the perfect image of perfection for somebody else, yes, we take the mask off. And for the first time, we begin to feel free that we don't have to please anybody, that we just have can give our generosity not because of need to, and to be approved. And, and then real people who love us will come our way and stay our way. And people who don't love us or love themselves will continue on because people who don't love themselves hang around people who don't love themselves. And it's a continual end of the world of the gods, the world that wounds. But the moment that wake up and we begin respecting one another, it's a dream that wakes up. And you know, like you said, brother, it's just a reminder. Yeah. Because we all know this information. Yeah. That's why I know that we all are shamans. Or yeah. Not yeah. Me. yeah, no, I love it, man. That's, you know, one of the things that I've been curious about, Jose, is, you know, there are a lot of people that have this, the story and the conversation about the families they're raised in, you know, that our families contribute in, and, and, and you write uh, about, you know, our domestication, and you teach about the domestication and what's taken place. In, in your life, what was it like for you to grow up in the family, in the home? Did you ever, like when you were younger, deal with, oh my God, my father is Miguel Ruiz of the Four Agreements. How am I ever going to contribute? How am I ever going to contribute? Did you ever, like, w have to work through those kinds of things of feeling less than? <clears throat> well, my, my, my feeling like that wasn't like that because, you know, I woke, I woke up in a, in a, in a family with, with, with a tradition. Yes. But my, my curiosity was suffering. So when, when, when I went to, when I talked, when knocking on the devil's door, that said when I went to negativity, to drug addiction, I lost myself. Okay. That it wasn't an opportunity like, how can I be the son of this family? No, it was a part of me wanting to return home. And the gift that my family gave to me was the light that I returned home because oh. deep inside I always knew what I was going to do, <laughs> you know. And 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 when I when I gave a, a my 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 agreement with the with the ocean, one time I was drowning, and I told the ocean, with, when I felt the fear of dying, I said, you know what? If you let me go, I will continue my family's tradition. And it wasn't to be approved by the family or or by people. No, it's about having the second opportunity wow. to give honor to my word. And every time I break my word, try to break my word, my life becomes chaotic yeah. <laughs> because this is the dream I have, and, you know, yeah. and uh, the, the beautiful thing is about returning home. That, yeah. that was my, 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 my thing. And, and my father told me many times, welcome back home again. And then I went and rebel and happened again. Hmm. So for, for me, it was to, to have another opportunity to live life. Yeah. So the, to, be, to be like, to, to live up to my father's dream, you know, that would be just illusion because that's, yeah. that would be based on ego. Yes. I, 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 I'm, I, I share his tradition with for gratitude because I am also one of the hundreds of thousands of people that got changed by this work that he did. Yeah. And I noticed that the work that he did was just completely be honest so he can deal with his own parasite, with his own negativity yeah, and right. take the superstition away. So when I say people, you know, when you have a vision, follow it. And he goes, you know, I never have visions. You know, I never have vision quests. And I go, do you ever daydream all the time? Well, that's it. Yeah. When you begin daydreaming, you begin imagining a life that you want, you know, and a life that you can leave behind. But the mind will say, I can never have that. And go, why not? Because we make an agreement to, that we, we're not meant for it. But the moment that you know that, you, you, that your love of your life, that is you, are yeah. meant for love, that is beautiful. Like, you know, like this puppy, you know, it, it's meant for love. And I will give him the love. And this is what we have to give, love. And we don't expect yeah. love in return. Oh, wow. You mean we've, we've trained ourselves that we don't expect love in return, uh, or yes, or like, go, yeah, go ahead. Yes. Like we live sharing. Yeah. We don't expect love in return because we are love. Okay. And the oh, other point, beautiful. we become, we become the drug addict that wants love that wants validation. And, and this will never happen because if we don't validate ourselves, right. if we don't appreciate ourselves, then we will never change because it will never come from the outside. This is why the beautiful thing about waking up is within. And we see how we live our dream. We see how we live our art. Then we wake up and there's like 7 billion people who live their dream, their art. And they're like the leaders of their own tribe. And they're responsible, like in their own tribe, like my father explains on his new books, the three questions, you know. He's the president of his own country. And mm -hmm. he has a Congress. And his presidency of his own country, 
that's been given permission to invade some other people's countries. And you know, like right now we're two countries together, you know? And, and if we don't like our, story, our country, if it's corrupted, we will change the Congress in it. And this will make our country without corruption but we're not. We cannot invade other countries. We can only know what's inside of ourselves. Wow. So that's in my my that new book that he explains. Yeah. But uh, but the beautiful thing is when we take the responsibility, and especially when we come from a, a lineage that is negative, you know that 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 they're very negative, that they hurt their abuse. Well, yeah. that could be an excuse to never change and do that to the kids again, and the story will continue. But what happens if that story goes back to another person, and the person says, you know what? This will end with me. Yes. I will no longer be a victim and, and say this happened yes. to my grandpa, to my father. This will yes. end. I will no longer be a victim. So the kids, they learn not for what they tell them. They learn with the experience. And many times, you know, there's problems in the household and the kids learn that. And instead of changing their ways, they send the kid to a to, to the doctor, to the to the mind doctor, to the, to the psychiatrist. Right. Because they don't want to change in the house, but the kids continue eating that poison. Yeah. And, and, and they could change when they continue. So... Walking the talk, walking the path is the beautiful thing. And that's one of the beautiful things about, you know, if you live the world of addiction, you find that you have power in your word, that you can overcome anything that your mind goes into. Yeah. And this is the beautiful thing when we beat our own demons. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, if you don't mind, I'll share a quick story. Um, when, when I was in Teo with you, uh, we, we, we did the ceremony at the top of the Pyramid of the Sun where we... We, we, we had a, 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 a ceremony of commitment to ourselves. And, um, you know, up until that point, I had always carried my little uh, Alcoholics Anonymous medallion uh, to, you know, that marked the number of years that I had been sober. And um, what, I ha what I did, what I realized is that part of my journey is I've been, I, I, have, I have arrived at a place of freedom. I'm not owned by that dream and that story anymore. I, I have been, I, I have walked into freedom and I'm free. And, and so, but there was a part of me that still identified with the story of that tribe of Alcoholics Anonymous. And, and I, and I honor that tradition. It's, it's such a beautiful, such a beautiful tradition. But for me, it was a gift to, to realize that I, I took that coin for part of my ceremony at the top of the Pyramid of the Sun, and I'd left the coin up there. And I, and, I, and I just became very conscious that my tribe are the 7.5 billion, 7.3 billion people on the planet, that we are in this together. And, and if we're going to change the dream of the planet, if we, it, it starts right here. It starts with me awakening right here. <laughs> yes. And and that hasn't left me. So so mm. I do carry I do carry a coin, but it's a fifty pesos Mexican. It's a 50, <laughs> 50 pesos coin from Mexico that I carry with me. Because I you know, when you told that story <laughs> of this the eagle, the snake and the cactus and coming home, it was like, Yeah, man, I'm coming home, brother, all the way. <laughs> Yeah. And, 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 and I love that story. Thank you for sharing it. And that you feel the, the, the willpower of that waking up. Yeah. And, 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 that's, and that's freeing when you, when, when you know that you have something to give wherever you go. Because yeah. it's the vibration, it's the presence. And I feel you, brother, yeah. that, that big love. You know, this is what the world needs. You know, it's okay to love. It's okay yeah. to have heart open. Because how anger is contagious, love is even more contagious. Yeah. Because that, that's the truth. That's yeah. the ego right there. So. Yeah. We can, we can, in, in living this way, you know, our ego can talk to other egos. And this is the, the beautiful thing about the, the service that we all do because we all work for the same boss. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I love that, man. We all work for the same boss. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There's a resonance within every one of us that is the, the theme of love, man. It's, uh, <laughs> love calls yeah. us to very similar ways of being in the world for sure and while yes, we're and all we so different home. yeah <laughs> so. yes. and that's a beautiful thing we can share our art with others and yeah. it inspire our souls yeah and yeah that's what it's all about yeah as an artist so so i want to i want to i want to turn the tables a little bit and and uh maybe interject something that many people may not know about you but you know when you stand and teach 
you know, I, you're probably often viewed as a holy man, but damn, you love, you, you love guns and roses. You, I, you, you love, you love big rock and roll. You, I, you write your own music. <laughs> you know, you're, you're not the guy that just stands up there presenting and talking about the traditions of your, of your, uh, you know, of your family, you know, of your, um, there's, there's something else going on with you. So would you share a little bit about things that, that bring you life that you just love that may be a surprise to people? Yeah. One of the beautiful things that I said, I love music because music, it just opens your heart. And I was, you know, somebody asked me, what's the secret of the Toltecs of thousands of years ago? And I said, I don't know. I was born in 1978. <laughs> I can read everything about them, you know, but who knows if it's true. What is true is that I am a Toltec, and Toltec means artist. So everything that inspires me to create art, that's the window that I like to go in. Mm. And I love the, the music, like, let's say Guns N' Roses. I, I even wearing their shirt right now. <laughs> oh, no, oh, no. See, now, wait a minute. I want to tell everybody I didn't know that. You had not shown me the shirt you were wearing before we sat down to record this. That's okay. That's pretty epic, man. <laughs> so, you know, so, you know, I, I find passion in that, especially when, let's say, when they reunited the three members. Yeah, they remember yeah. Rain and Slash just rocked that guitar up. Yeah. It hits a chord to the center. Just like when I went to India and I heard Sai Baba speak, it hit a chord to my center. Mm. When I hear my grandmother speak, when I hear all these masters speak, when I hear all humans sing, they hit a chord that goes beyond the mind. And when and like the and it just completely opens. So when you follow your passion, if you like to paint, you like to art, you like to work with numbers, Everything that will stop you from thinking and opening your heart, that is where you get the creativity of the source. And we have to be truthful to that. When I started my, my journey, you know, some of my elders said, you know, who were sharing just their personal dream, you know, that was real for them, yeah. but not real for me. They're saying, in order for you to wake up more, you have to let everything go. You, you have to stop watching cartoons. You have to stop listening to rock music. And, and I did it for a year. And you know what? I betrayed myself. Wow. I was I was I, I was like not giving this puppy the water or the bones that he likes to do, you know, you know, the candy, you know, I, I took it out from me and I began punishing me in order to feed into a certain place. And then one day I said, you know what, it, 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 I, I'm, I'm not being truthful to myself and I'm, 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 I'm channeling my light. And this is one thing I like about Siddhartha when he was um, becoming the, the studying to not be like a, the saint that they don't eat, you know, that right. they, they just feast on, on air. And then after years. He had a, a circle of apprentices, they all were following him. And then he got into the river and this beautiful lady gave him a bowl of rice and he began eating. And then the apprentices came in and said, hey, we can no longer follow you because you have betrayed us. He goes, no, 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 you don't understand. The body is meant to eat. The body is meant to be nourished, <clears throat> eat. And, and you know, he didn't want to please them. He just was following. So yeah. at one point it worked for them, <laughs> but he had to be truthful for them. And, and this is one thing that sometimes we do when we have a, a, a broken heart. Uh, we, we, we have to go to things that make us come back alive again. Mm -hmm. So if you notice when we go to, a, 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 when we unlearn any addiction, they give us some, some things that, you know, that activity, something to stop thinking, you know, some activity to do. And one thing that I love about, uh, that I used a lot, this metaphor that I love from the movie was the forest gump. When he got heartbreak, you know, when his yeah. partner left him and she disappeared. He heard heartbroken, so he just put his shoes on, yeah. tennis shoes on, he began to run. Yeah. He ran yeah. for like three years, you know, he had yeah. followers running, you know. And then all of a sudden he goes, I'm tired now. I want to go home. And all the yes. followers, where, where, what should we do? What do we do? Well, I don't know. I'm tired. I want to go home. And that's something that we do in life, you know. We we, we start doing things with things that we love. For first come, his meditation was running to let go. That prayer said, for me, is music. Yeah. It's art. Yeah. Anything that I can stop Jose from thinking because I'm here to protect myself from myself and this is one of the most beautiful things yeah especially it's probably I have to answer a call okay yeah sometimes we have to answer a call and <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah in real life in real life the phones ring <laughs> yes <laughs> and that's the beautiful thing we you know that help us to overcome ourselves because service make us not have pity for ourselves victim ourselves Service make us get out of our own suffering, yeah. our own victimization, and wanting to serve. Like one time, my father was living with a 16 person of his heart capacity, and uh, and he couldn't. He 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 was saying, "Okay, I'm I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna do that." And I said to my father, "I cannot do this right now because my stomach hurts." And he goes, "Oh, don't worry, I will do it." 
is because in that moment I mastered the mastery of complaining. And oh. I knew that I was complaining about little things so I didn't do. So when I break that spell to myself, I begin understanding, you know, we can overcome anything. Yeah. Yeah. Wow, that's beautiful. I, you know, I love it. It, it brings me some comfort, Jose, to know that you, that you can take lines and scenes from movies and it becomes part of your life <laughs> because, you know, it seems like I've strung, I've strung five or six movies together and there are scenes that jump out at me when I'm encountering things in life um, that, uh, that, 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 that just land, you know? In fact, I was driving out of LA uh, yesterday or day before yesterday and went past the town of San Dimas, and it just brought back memories oh. of Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure. Yes. <laughs> As something afoot at the Circle K, you know, yeah. or be excellent to each other, you know, <laughs> party on, dudes, and be excellent party to on. each other. Yeah. <laughs> so just think if you would have forever stopped watching cartoons or playing music, or it, you like you denied yourself in order to try and fit into someone else's story of life you know what what you, you would not be offering and being of service and in service in the world the way that you are now yes because one of the most beautiful thing is that the message is everywhere yeah the message is everywhere and because we have it inside so everywhere's a mirror so we begin seeing ourselves in everything oh, and, wow. and, and let's say like like i say i, I love gi joe's that cartoon when i was a kid yeah and the commercial was knowing is after battle so we look at it, oh, having awareness is half the battle to let go of something. If we don't get the awareness, how can we let go of something? So yes, we're, we're seeing ourselves everywhere. That's why we, in the Totec tradition, we wake up in the mirror room, knowing that everywhere, everyone is us. You know, so how I treat people is how I'm treating myself because if I am negative to a person <clears throat> and I walk away from them, I can still feel how I was negative to the person that my body even feels it. Oh my God, you were negative. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah. And, and but we begin to unlearn because that's, uh, that's what happens. We're trained by life. And, but, but things that give us pleasure, that's the thing we should do because that's the thing that, you know, that body loves. So mm. when we, when we unlearn everything, it's time to reprogram ourselves and reprogram things that we love to do. Like for me, going to the most beautiful uh, meditation for me is rock and roll concert. Because you don't know people, you're in the arena and then you're singing the songs and you turn around and you're both singing a song, just, just, like, just, like, just like church. When yeah. you sing song and you shake hands, you have that communion of the agreement. So you know that you're not alone. The love yeah. just is everywhere. Oh, I love that, man. That's, <laughs> that's, I'm taking that one with me to the next concert I go to, brother. That's, <laughs> <laughs> and I'm taking my Bic lighter too. Oh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh well you know i would i would like to uh you talk a little bit about the book that just got released i you know why why choose stories from your tradition to to share with us what was what came to you that that uh had you sit down and and share with us the wisdom of the shamans well it's basically uh honor to my elders mm. They have a torch they ha are passing on to us that if we don't get that torch and pass it on to the little children those stories will, will, will not exist but the beautiful thing is to when we begin to meditate and the stories begin playing inside of us you know we're storytellers right and uh, and and when and we when we'll see going stories through us we begin that every story has a meaning every story has a, a message so all the stories that were put into this book came through me not through oral tradition, it came to me through spirit guides. Hmm. And this is the, the wisdom of the shamans because inspiration as an artist, like an ant, you know, because I open its antennas to begin to download. And I'm not the only one being downloaded this information. Many people have been at the same time. And when you begin listening to you and then the ideas begin birthing, you put a piece of you of telling a story because this is how you communicate to children sometimes. And you know what? Children just grow up and they can be 60, 80 years old and they're still children and they have a big mask on. <laughs> so if it's storytelling makes them not want to compare yourself with others of knowledge, but it tells a story where you, they put the hidden gems. So our ancestors, our teachers, they put hidden gems that they see us because if we, they told us straight out the truth was happening in our life. We will resist it and shut down. Yes. But storytelling 
makes you imagine, you know, it makes you feel like you're part of the characters, that you're part of the snake, like the little snake that was afraid of the light. Yes. That Sherlock, the God of the Rain, had to pour rain so that yeah. he had to get him out of the darkness. That's in like one of the chapters in the new book. Yeah, Quetzalcoatl. Like, yeah, the Getsa, yeah, the birth of Quetzalcoatl. Yeah, and I, the I, love, that I that, love that story. Oh, thank oh. you, brother. <laughs> oh, man, that's... Whew. Yeah, and, and the gift of that story is that heaven doesn't need heaven. Who needs heaven is hell. And we are heaven, and we'll take heaven everywhere we go. Yeah. And it begins in our storytelling to ourselves, because <clears throat> if we, when we tell our story, we're the one listening to our story. And we're listening to our story, we're telling the story. Mm. So that wakes up the dream catcher that the, the Asian one is telling us. You know, We're not the flag getting stuck in a dream catcher. No, we are the dream catcher. Mm. And that's the storyteller telling us dream. Even we tell a story about victimization, we're telling a story. But how does that story make us feel? So that's why I wanted to put all these stories into this new book, because they have a story, they have a meaning, and they have an exercise. Yes. But one of the beautiful things when we begin feeling like that is like we're one of those characters. Yeah. Yeah. I, you know, there are a couple of stories. In fact, I, um, you know, Quetzalcoatl and his resistance to coming, you know, to, to, to his fear. And then what, what Source did in order, you know, to, to, get him out of the cave you know it's like he he stays in the cave and in the darkness or he and dies or or he comes out into the light and then he becomes this incredibly beautiful brilliant powerful being you know um so tell you know share that story a little bit more because that 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 is a powerful I, 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 because I can identify with that resist, man, I am resistant. <laughs> I may see the light out there, but I, it's like, I'm a, I, I'm a little bit afraid of, yes, of I, stepping I, I into it because, and being the light. You know what I'm saying? Yes, absolutely. Because, you know, when we, when we say we're responsible for heaven or hell, yeah. it's scary because I mean, we have to take responsibility. We're no longer looking at said, Hey, who's going to do it for us? Who's gonna usher us? No, it's time for we to become the jaguar energy. Yeah. And uh, and and it's scary sometimes. You know, we we're so ex we have too many excuses, justifications to stay in the darkness. But then when those justifications and excuses go away, you find yourself with the truth and say, okay, now or never. And the little snake, when the when the cave was getting full, all the other snakes were coming out, but the little snake was still resisting. It could, like you said, it could have drowned or forcibly get out. And this is when we have that experience. We have a second opportunity. When we wake up and we see our old way of life, say no more. So yeah. we begin to unlearn. So the snake got pushed into the light, and the and, and then when he was feeling like a beautiful bird was flying around, he said, "I want to be like the beautiful bird. I want to be something that is not me." And then the another snake said, "You will never be that bird." So it <laughs> broke its heart. And so he was trying to go back, and he said he could never fly. He looked into the puddle of water. He looked at himself in the face and he said, "You know what? I don't have." wings but i have imagination and imagination is the will to break any barrier of what the old dream puts us in so he broke all the red flags he believed in itself and all of a sudden he was flying he was comfortable until Tlaloc blew put him into the air and he was experiencing the wind but when he saw the sun our creator the real us he went inside and he, when he came out or she came out he was no longer a little frightened snake. He was the force of Quetzalcoatl, yeah. which is the Christ energy, the divine energy of, of life coming yeah. out. And he flew all around and he knew that this was the moment that heaven doesn't need heaven. Who needs heaven is hell. And wherever he goes, will heaven with them. And this is the birth of the Toltec dream. You know, Toltec is not a religion. It's a way of life. Right. When we wake up and we know that we're alive, we're heaven. <clears throat> what are we going to share? Are we going to share our past or negativity? No. Make people feel bad about us? No. We're going to give that fruit now. We overcome it, you know. Right. Like, let's say this appetite for destruction we had. Now we have appetite for creation. Yeah. To create a beautiful dream and to share <laughs> so we can purify. We can change anything that's negative into positive because we have that heart. And we see the respect in anybody. I remember, like, uh, probably like 20 years ago, Michael, Reverend, uh, Reverend Michael Beckwith. Yes. I met him. I was a kid and he looked at my eyes and I was going through my own battles. And he said to me, the simple words, I see you. Mm. I see you and you will shine and he walked away and 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 I know what he was saying you know yeah he saw that part of himself inside of me because that's what's in part of everybody that yeah. lives in life in the yeah, little brother. beings in the animals in the humans <laughs> that's what we really are that's why when we wake up into this feeling we can go to the nature and know that you know that nature is among us communicating mm. when we when we look into animals you know little animals 
we know that we have the awareness in our mind to take care of them. And this is where humans are being born into this world so we can take up care of animals. Yeah. And how many justifications they exist, you know, we cannot take care of animals because we're here to destroy them and they justify, you know, to have it, you know, it's proven when a little kid, you know, when they started hurting animals, they start hurting cats, that becomes at the beginning of a, being a serial killer of, yeah. but, you know, a psychopath. Yeah. Yeah. But, you know, and, and then they justify that it's okay to hurt animals, but it's not okay. Right. And they have all these occasions. That's why our consciousness has different levels of awareness. When you know that everything has to serve for life, your consciousness even evolves because there's a big energy behind it. And there's still many layers that we have to leave other addictions. But the beautiful thing is that once you wake up, you can no longer go against your consciousness. Like right. before, 10 years ago, I didn't have this consciousness, you know, but now I, I do. But if I try to return to the consciousness that I had 10 years ago, I will just go against myself. It's like trying to be a rattlesnake that wants to fit into his dead skin that he shed like 10 years ago, you know? Yeah, that trying, to fit, trying to fit back into it. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> and it, it doesn't exist anymore. Yeah. No. Yeah. Yeah. That, yeah, that's, that, that's a beautiful example of like once, once you wake up where there's no place to go, you know? Mm -mm. Yeah. There's the just, service. there's, mm -hmm. there's no place to go. So yeah. except forward to keep moving yes. in the direction that we're, we're being invited into, you know? Yeah. That's why one so. day, one day I said, I asked my father, father, when people come to you and ask for enlightenment, they don't know how to do what they're asking you. Right. And he goes, no, they don't. And I said, you know, because I didn't have any idea what I was asking you because I thought enlightenment was a so, so pretty different thing that I wanted to run it to and feel safe. But now I know that enlightenment is service. Yeah. And that's very scary to people to be a service to yeah. themselves. Yeah. To get their responsibility and say, yes. okay, I have a <clears> drinking <throat> problem, but I want to drink today. I will right. go through my shakes. I will go through anything. I will go through the discomfort. And when it's going so bad, this is the one I say, no, not today. And that could be in any little thing. Whew. Yeah. That, yeah, that's very true. Yep. Yeah. The Bodhisattva, you know, in the Buddhist tradition, uh, he, he, that, that enlightenment is, isn't so that he can, uh, sit at home and, you know, drink chai tea and be, uh, full of comfort and at ease. Uh, it, it awakens something in him that it's, it's that it now going to another scene. It's that scene of Kirk, uh, is it Kurt Russell, uh, in backdraft when he's holding on to his friend's hand that's uh, mm. about to drop into the fire and his friend is saying let me go and uh, Kurt Russell says you go we go and mm. there's that you know that that's that's the depth of service that we get to be to, to give you know our hearts can open that much yes and, and, and then we can serve you know if we, we spend like Years mastering how to build a home. Yes. And then we see someone who needs help building their home. Yeah. Oh, I know how to do this. Yeah. You know, and, and, and that will put us in the right situation. That's why whatever we went through in life, it, it was supposed to happen because it happened. It's yeah. not in vain. Life trained us to help us in another point. Like when I was 11 years old, I thought that, you know, that I had to go for suffering to be an adult. Hmm. I wish I could speak to Jose that's 11 year old, but I can't because that Jose is gone. Yeah. But I can speak to another 11-year-old or 15-year-old who think that way. Oh, because oh. whatever we went through, we can just give them advice, and they will feel it from heart to heart. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, my beautiful friend Sandra that you met before we started recording and I were talking. We had that conversation last night that, you know, I, I don't get to go back and become uh, a, like a youth at risk. But I get to, uh, yeah, we were talking about the idea of writing a book and and sharing if if I could if I who I am today could speak to my 13 year old that was in so much pain, here's mm -hmm. here's what I can share. Here's what I here's mm -hmm. what I here's what I know. Here's what I can share. Mm. Yes, and that's the medicine, brother. Yeah, man, that's that's the medicine. That's the medicine. Yeah, right there. Yeah, yeah. And, really. and we all have a medicine back, and it's right here. Yeah. To use all the tools. All the language, not to go into debate against other stories, no, to listen to them. And that's the important thing of storytelling. Yeah. We begin telling a story to ourselves and it feels good and motivates us. We go forward because there's many people who have different belief systems, different religions, but you know, but if it's working, it's opening their heart. It's beautiful because 4,000 years of language is not the truth. What is the truth is the feeling that we feel inside. 
the silent knowledge that we communicate with everything, oh. knowing that we are okay. And yeah. you know, and and like they say, the Egyptians say, to enter heaven, your heart must be light as a feather. If your heart is not light as a feather, you cannot enter heaven. And of course, they're not talking about the heart, they're talking about the consciousness. Yes. If our consciousness is dirty and goes against us, we will never be in peace. Right. But the moment that we know that we do our best, that we share with our heart, we are in peace. Yeah. And you know, temptations will come. Temptations will come, we will fall, but we will stand back up. This is why the opportunity of our ancestors, they only had themselves, you know. But now we have a community that we mm -hmm. can reach out to. You know, we can talk to people that feel the same way that we never met because we are working. We're like probably like 45% of the country, of the world now, completely, to, completely going to the wake up point. And we're wow. perfect to, perfectly clear with everything. That's why sometimes there's got to be a lot of negativity, like the negativity is happening in the world, you know, and it's happened before. But positivity and the truth and heaven have always prevailed. Yeah. Negativity and darkness comes for a few years. But stronger generations, like the young ones that are going up everywhere, standing up for Mother Nature. Yes. That's the future right there. And, yeah. and it makes me so happy. It's like the new buds are growing of life. Yeah. And, you know, and the old ones are ready to let go. They're going to become instinct now. Yeah. Boy. And that's what they fear. Yeah, that. Yes. And and in that fear, we're seeing the re, the retaliation or that it's almost that uh, dying, the dying, the gasp of the dying man, the clutch and holding on to something that they feel is slipping away. And um, but, you know, life, life, in my experience too, Jose, life will prevail. And, yes. you know, capital I, capital L, capital I, capital F, capital E, man, that, that life prevails always. Yes. And th th that was a beautiful prophecy from my great grandfather. He, he, he said, you know, one of the last Nagwals is going to have his heart sacrificed and he's going to live without his heart. And that's when the whole world is about to change for another wave of positivity for the sick son to be awakened. And the other day, my dad and I were sitting in the in the living room, mm -hmm. and you know we started laughing, and because my dad began sharing a story, you know, my grandfather shared his story. He said to me, and you know what? I had a heart transplant like five, seven years ago, and they took my heart out, and I'm still living. So we are among <laughs> the prophecy right now. <laughs> yeah, oh, that that's that's fantastic. Yeah, <laughs> is that the way that they told them? You know, like they're gonna be all in feathers. No, he was just in a in a hospital. Yeah, in a, right. I forgot which hospital it was, but it was in a hospital that happened yeah. in a modern end time. Yeah, but we humans like to make it so mystical, so you know, a, a, a truth that we cannot reach. Yeah, but we don't understand that that in the past we only have love, imagination, and fear. Hmm. And all the stories were created by that. But right now, you know, science yeah. is, is along with nature, yes. with the instinct of the heart. Right. And the truth is their God. Yeah. And, and, and the truth is returning back. That's why I love the story of, like you share, of the Mexican coin, because yeah. that no longer is a Mexican symbol. It's a human symbol. It's a human symbol. symbol of humanity. Yeah. Because yes. we return to our truth and we cannot give what we don't have. And we give that to ourselves. Yeah. We have compassion for the rest of the world. Yeah. <laughs> and this is how the antidote of the world of the God sense. Yeah. I had a good friend of mine. Um, yeah, I was I was having one of this was a long time ago and I was complaining about like terrorism and things like, you know, all the whatever the political thing was of the day. And I was having this rant and he said he looked at me and he said, you know something, Greg, if you want to end terrorism, stop terrorizing yourself. It was like, whoa, oh my God, that, yeah. that was, that pierced the veil. You know what I'm saying? It, yeah. it, uh, because I can get caught up in the complaint of what my, what I feel is maybe wrong in the world, quote unquote, yeah. it's wrong. And, and I can get all caught up in the controversy of things like that. But if, if, if I'm going to bring an end to it, I bring an end to it within me. Yes. Yeah. And, and, and that's what the gift that I see that we don't, if we don't take it personal, we don't have the tools to destroy our world. Wow. We don't give permission to destroy our world. Yeah. Because it's being offered to us to every day. That's why I say, may life protect us from ourselves. Because, you know, the temptation to go against yourself is, is everything. And that was a beautiful, a beautiful answer your friend said, because it's truth. We yeah. terrorize ourselves, then we terrorize our friends, yeah. our family. We don't yeah. we don't stop talking about that fear, and yeah. then everybody lives in fear, and then that that entity, the demon, gets big, yeah. and it's what it is. 
Yeah. But it it, 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 it it will go on soon because, you know, awareness is for everybody. We all go through the stages of hate only mm -hmm. to wake up. So we're not, there's no separation. It's only different dreams. Right. But I used to live a different dream that it goes against Jose, that terrorized Jose until that didn't feel good anymore. Right. And I came back to the light. So we all human, we, we all have to go past through this. Yeah, and you and you've shared you've come back to the light more than once. You yes, know, you've, you've had you've you've had iterations of of uh, stepping into the light and then and having you know having your story resurrect too. You know that and drew you back into rebellion and um, you know it it it's like the biblical story of the prodigal. You know, and that that has be, begun. It to mean so much to me because it is it's all of us coming home all the way and it isn't coming home just yes. like hope, and, hoping to eat the eat the crumbs from our family's table it's coming home to sit mm -hmm. at the table and, yes uh, yeah yes and and when we wake up we wake up in the stream of the planet we wake up in in the world living a nightmare yeah but when, when, when we open our heart you know we can share with our friends, you know, you can wake up from this dream. Yeah. Yeah. You can wake up from this dream. That's, that's it, man. <laughs> yeah. Because yeah. it's our dream that we're yeah. sharing. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, I, I think if I could offer anything to my friends that are listening, it's, you know, that sense of hopelessness that you'll never wake up from your dream. That's not the truth. The truth yes. is we get to wake up anytime we choose. Yes. I, I remember when I first read the four agreements yeah. and I said to my dad, this is easy piece of cake. But then I began practicing them and I would turn to him and said, you know, father, these are difficult agreements. And he said, no, they're easy. The agreements that are difficult is the agreements that you have made with yourself. So when we break those agreements and we make an agreement of love, <clears throat> our world will change. And yeah. I don't mean the corrupt love. I mean the real self love, yeah. the one that yeah. we forgive and let go of things yeah. and we don't repeat these negative yeah. things that we do. That's the real forgiveness when we stop repeating and going against Ooh. life and ourselves. Wow. In that moment, everything changes. Yeah. And it's the presence that remains awake. Yeah. And and I'm so happy for you to hear your message because your message is your heart and I can feel it. When we <laughs> met and we were talking in the temple of Quetzalcoatl, you know, we both saw the dream. Yeah. And and it's always beautiful honor when you are with somebody who gets it because <laughs> we work for the same boss. So, yeah, you know, <laughs> that empowers us to continue forward. Yeah. Because we're sharing our dream to this world. Yeah. And if we, we don't like yes. our dream, we can share it. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. What a beautiful thing to have a dream, to be awakened yes. to the fact that I, I, I am the artist and I get to create. And, and this dream that I'm creating is gets to be a beautiful gift to me and to to everyone that my life gets to touch as your dream awaken you and it's touching thousands and thousands of people now jose you know that's mm. that's that's what we get it just gets to roll out into the world you know yeah and and, and the beautiful thing is that we get to experience and share this with the love of our life yes. which is ourselves Ourself. we come back again yes. resurrected yeah and then we, we meet people you know with friends you know, that we, we share the dream and we share the dream of heaven. Yeah. And we remind ourselves of one another. If I begin losing, you know, my partner, she says, okay, come back. You know, that's not real anymore. Oh, thank you. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And, and that helps me wake up, you know, and friends do this, parents do this. This is why we have one another. We are a tribe. And when we have this community, you know, in the heart, that's what makes this village what it is. Yeah. Yep. And then there, then there are those moments in time, Jose, and I know we're coming up on an hour here and I didn't even ask, you know, how much time you allotted. So, you know, we can, we can begin to bring this to a close. But one of the things that, that is, that comes up for me is what you experienced when your family, your tribe, so to speak, began to, to want you to, to like surrender to their dream their way mm -hmm. and you had something within you that was a you were able to distinguish your truth uh that that the truth of of the tribe and the family necessarily wasn't your truth so yeah that we have moments that even our tribe speaking to us we get to discern 
our truth versus and 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 our uh, what we're being guided to do and be in the planet from what we're being told yes because it's, it's very beautiful you know like rama said to me if i catch you doing what i did you're killing the totec tradition hmm. if you if i catch you doing what your father did you, you you're killing the totec tradition you have to learn from your path of life oh. how you come back to life because the dream continues changing and I remember somebody said to my father, Father, I don't want to be like, you know, Miguel, I don't want to be like like you. And he said, you know, who asked you to be like me? Hmm. And sometimes we want to be like our teachers, like our mm-hmm. role models. But, you know, we're never going to be ourselves. So that's why when someone says to me, Jose, would you be my spiritual teacher, my spiritual yeah. guy? I said, I can't. Yeah. And they said, why not? They might not worth it. No, it's because if I teach you, I'm going to teach you to be me. Yeah. You have to open up and be you. Oh. And together, you'll remind <laughs> me when I fall down. And we will keep one another. The time for gurus and pedestals is over. Yes. Because this is honesty. Yeah. And I've seen in many different conferences, people who are very famous, you know, and then they give a beautiful presentation, but they go backstage and they begin screaming at their people who help this because it's going against a tribe. Yeah. Ego has come in. So yeah. that's why it's important to never forget where we come from. Yeah. Never forget our humbleness and never forget that we're here at service because the dream can get us at any time, especially with the, with the ego. That's why it's mm. important to always be honest with ourselves. If it feels good, it feels good. And if it yeah. doesn't feel good, you know, we have to really unlearn because we never stop learning until the day we go home. Mm. But when we do this and we overcome whatever we overcome, then five years later, said, oh, my God, I know why I went through this. Because yeah. you speak another part that is you again. Yeah. Yeah. Every time, every time I receive a call from another alcoholic, I, I know why I spent years in active addiction. You know, <laughs> because I've got power, I've got experience, strength, and hope that that I just simply get to offer and share. You yes, know? brother, and and it's a and it's a beautiful honor to see your power because that honor is the flame that we speak yeah. about in yeah. the common tradition, and yeah. you're keeper of the flame, yeah. and you're passing the flame to anyone who comes to you, because you know you give what you have, and what you have is the how you overcome that part of you, yeah. and that will spark something up. And, and this is how the beautiful thing, how pay, we pay it forward and we're at service. Yeah, that's it, man. <laughs> Very honored, brother, yeah. to, uh, to dance together in this life. Jose, bless you, my brother, man. This has been so good. Mm-hmm. I, uh, and if not before, yeah, who knows, who knows when our paths will cross like on the planet again. But it's my intention that they will indeed do that again in September in Joshua Tree. Now, oh, yes. and look, would you <laughs> would, and would you mind sharing like what your next engagements are going to be? Where are you going to be in the next several months? Well, ne- ne- next week I'm going to Sacramento. Okay. And then we're going to go to the East Coast to Omega Institute. Yeah. We're going to celebrate the Circle of Fire. We're going to go to Teotihuacan again to celebrate oh. the New Year's, and oh. we're going to return to India. Oh, nice. And, uh, Yes, but, but I'm looking forward to this summer. We're gonna from we're gonna promote and uh, and share the wisdom of the shaman. So we're gonna go on on a car going up the south to the to the southern California to northern California, nice. and to see where the car takes us. Because oh, I'm, yeah, I'm right, see, yeah. Yes. So so you are going. You are going. In fact, I'm gonna I'm gonna put the I am gonna show a, a a copy of the book, and get this book. Honestly, um, those of you that are that are watching uh the stories of the wisdom in this book and not only the stories but what's what lights me up jose every time you and i have a chance to communicate or i read something that you've written is that there's always an extended invitation for me to step into the power of the shaman and being of service and and that's that's why you go get the book because it speaks to you waking up and becoming the shaman of your life and your dream. So my brother, thank you so much, man. Is it, oh, thank you again for this opportunity, brother, yeah. this invitation. Yeah. Thank you for taking the time. You, you don't know how much I appreciate it. It's just, I, if for nothing else, it, I was thinking today, it's two brothers that get to sit down and spend an hour and have a beautiful conversation. So, Yes. Yeah. And I, I can't even believe that it was so quick. I know. I, it, for, isn't that the truth? <laughs> <laughs> All right, my brother. We, um, we will we will see see you soon. And and remember that sign? Remember when I yes. uh, text that to you? There you go. I love you, man. 
Yes, I love you too, yeah. brother. All right. See you, Jose. Okay. Yo. Bye now.